So we will go, this is the testis anatomical structure that everyone we know this thing. So any, what are the diseases that occurs in that testis? That may be inflammatory, non-inflammatory, developmental defect, but most important is that testicular neoplasm. Developmental defect that is important is the cryptorthesis. Sometimes the mother will come with the baby with the undescended testis or a testis is missing. So what is the problem in that? Mother is very careful about their baby. So they are very much come to that surgery department that her testis is missing or something or is not present in the both side. So what is the problem in that? It is an anatomical defect that is the testis is an undescended testis. So what is the danger is in this? Danger is this is the undescended testis is harvest a testicular tumor mostly in the seminoma testis. So that's why the mother or parents their answers about this undescended testis. So developmental defect. Sometimes the patients are due to presented with some uh, chromosomal abnormality or genetical defects huh, that also Kleinfelter syndrome, Marfan syndrome will come. Another non tumor mutation is the hydrocin, you know, pyrocin that is the pass in the testicular thing, and that is the pyrocin that is the pass, hematocin may be the blood within the sac, or it may be a Spermatocyte that is the sperm may leak from that seminiferous tubules and collected within the hernia, so that is the sac. So these are the some non-tumorous lesion, but most important is our testicular tumor that we have to remember for exam point of view and also in the clinical. So testicular tumor, so many types of tumors are available, these are the some features. Now, testicular tumor is not so common, it is usually 1% to 2% and it can occur as a whole, it can occur in the any age group, maybe in the younger age group, maybe in the adult or maybe some tumors are in, maybe in the older age group. So, in all age, the tumor may be present in different types of tumor in different age groups. And another most important thing is this. Depend upon the WHO, they have classified the testicular tumor in according to their histogenesis. 2022, from their classified because of their treatment point of view and the histogenesis, the WHO now classified in different way because of that tumor and their treatment modality from the clinical part of view. What are those things? Mostly the 95% tumor are arises from the germ cell or precursors germ cell from the testicular seminiferous tubules. And other part is that 5% is the sex cord stromal tumor. That is the seminiferous tubules other than the stroma that is the Sartoli cell, radix cells, all in between the seminiferous tubules that tumor arising from that. This is the two main group and clinics that surgeons or clinician, they differentiated the seminiferous tumor, the testicular tumor in two groups, that is the seminoma and non-seminoma, because they have two types of treatment modalities and the prognosis also are different. That's why clinician, the seminiferous, that is the seminoma and non-seminoma type of tumor for their treatment purpose. So, we will discuss accordingly one by one. Histogenesis, that WHO they have differentiated histogenetically, that is the some crypto organism. What I told, that is the developmental defect or missing, missing gonad. Uh, that is the crypto organism. That may be a testis, maybe within the abdomen, maybe in the inguinal canal, not undescended from there up to the scotal sac. So that is the undescended testis or it may be cryptoorganism or sometimes the patient may present it with the genetic defects, maybe a Kleinfelter syndrome, maybe a uh, Marfan syndrome or Down syndrome, these are the genetic abnormalities. Sometimes the patient, the uh, other factors in these tumors are 
germ cells neoplasm in situ that is the seminiferous stimulus they have some in situ component if it is not differentiated in that uh, in that uh, developmental period they are prognosed up to that uh, post pivotal phase and these undergo the tumor formation so that is the in situ component not developed in that pre pivotal stage in the post pivotal phase they are presented as tumor so in situ component in the seminiferous tubules may be a source of tumor formation and this tumor may have some genetical abnormalities what are those maybe uh, aneuploidy maybe a <coughs> different types of amplification or deletion of the chromosome and well, p53 t p53 cyclin e or these are the some genetic abnormalities in as a whole all are present in the testicular tumor so in broad classification that according to the histogenesis they are classified into two groups the tumor associated with germ cell neoplasia in situ related to germ cell neoplasia in situ related another is not related to germ cell neoplasia in situ again at all complicated classification chilo na but nowadays due to the molecular analysis the who have differentiated this classifications very complicated and is very difficult to remember for you but for completion don't know sometimes they ask for in the short note also you don't know but you have to remember that tumors are classified broadly by two jansen neoplasia in situ related and not related to jansen neoplasia in situ that is two broad group so you remember these two heading only and the tumor previously those are come in this separately two group according to the current who classification it's very difficult for you so this is related to this jansen neoplasia in situ they have chromosomal amplification 12 amplification it is not related to that 12 uh, chromosomal 12 amplification and the tumors are in the post pivotal seminoma and non seminoma so seminoma will come in jansen neoplasia and related to jansen neoplasia in situ so seminoma will come as short note so you remember only it is a jansen neoplasia as related to the jansen neoplasia in situ in post pivotal phase here yeah. so this is the come under this and other it is seminoma and other non seminoma is amyloid post pivotal eoxac teratoma conjugacinoma no need to all remember only you know the name of the tumor that come under testis only two broad heading one under related to the carcinoma in situ it is the seminoma and in this group also a non seminoma and other than that our tumors are there it is the lack of 12 amplification lack only two heading you remember it is okay for exam purpose only no need to remember all it is very complicated and difficult to remember previously it was not like that it was a easy classification now it is a according to you have to the uh, mcq so current affairs no so we have to remember some things no need to go they are all details i'm not going in details so what are these two broad heading it is related to jansen neoplasia in situ is not related to these the two big groups and the markers are in the test is at one is lactase dehydrogenase one according to the components related to that tumor if it is a seminoma related to uh, other components that may be uh, uh, lactate dehydrogenase or it may associate with the beta hcg or it is an alpha fetoprotein if it is a eoxac tumor so it is a mixture of tumors if it is a choriocarcinoma then it is a beta hcg so all the mixture of those tumors and express different types of marker tumor marker different types and this is very important because the tumor markers helps in the treatment of the patient clear yeah. so sometimes they asked in the oral what are the tumor markers present in this testicular tumor or separately they will ask if it is a choriocarcinoma what is the marker that is a beta hcg if it is a eoxac tumor it is an alpha beta protein what are the other tumors alpha beta protein is positive what are the other tumors 
alpha pedocotin is for the other than your sac, Wallo Eracom Hobo or Algigas. If it is a testicular tumor or, 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 or ovary, it is a yolk sac tumor, it is a positive for alpha pedocotin. What are the other tumors related to alpha pedocotin? Hepatocellular, hepatocellular carcinoma. So it is a ox in the oral. So alpha pedocotin, hepatocellular carcinoma, yolk sac tumor, the ovary, and was tumor. The test is. If it is a mixed young cell tumor or mixture of all those things, maybe in the tube, uh, to the test it may be in the ovary, that will come accordingly. So any tumor, if not, it is not identified under microscope, so you have to test for those things. So due to that treatment, clear? I am not going in details, only the heading we know. <coughs> that is that WHO 22. Heading is a young cell neoplasia. From the in situ derived, it is not derived in situ. It is X cut stomach tumor, and it is a hematolymphoid tumor. Any other tumor, such as lymphoma, testicular lymphoma, don't forget for oral. That is the testicular lymphoma. Don't forget, it is a young cell tumor related to that in situ component. That is a seminoma and non seminoma. It is non related to the in situ. Are sex cuts from a cell, lady cell, subtly cell, subtly lady cell, gallonous cell tumor, mixed tumor. I am not going in details, only you know the architecture only. Very difficult, it is not, it is a postgraduate question. They, nobody will ask, but sometimes they ask in that MCQ. Huh? For that, it is no remember all those things. Very difficult, you have to read all the chapters, all the other subjects also. So, no need. I am not going, this is the two classification. Now, the proper for oral, for that specimen, eh? and for theory. This is the seminomer testis. This is the testis, this is a cut of N. This is the normal testicular tissue. This is the T1. This is the well circumscribed. Sometimes it may be a lobulated, slightly gray white, or it may be slightly yellowish. This is the tumor. I will come in one by one. So it is the commonest tumor in the middle age group. If it is undescended testis, it can occur in the children or younger age group also. If it is an undescended or crypto organism. So here is the important. Only the seminoma is the most chance for harboring the type of undescended testis. And this tumor may express, according to the histological component, the tumor markers also express like this way. Yeah? And grossly, so this is the gross. This is a large, to entirely involved in the whole entire testis or yellowish, lobulated. It no, usually not hemorrhage and necrosis. Only this tumor, they have no hemorrhage and necrosis. They involve entirely testis, lobulated, surface is usually smooth, maybe sometimes it's lobulated. Sometimes it involves the, the scotal sac or sometimes if it is a further or extend up to further more or in advanced test, it may involve the epididymis spermatic cords and distal metastasis according to the stage of the patient and microscopic. So that grossly that if it is a gross specimen, the gross is over. Now if they ask in the what is the microscopy, the microscopy is see this. This is the tumor, sheets of tumor, they arranged in lobular configuration, separated by a fiber septa and the fiber septa is infiltrated by the lymphocytes. So the tumor is a lobular configuration separated by a fibrovascular stroma infiltrated by the lymphocyte. And how the tumor cells look like? Round to oval cell, clear to eosinophilic cytoplasm, centrally placed nucleoli, nucleus and prominent nucleoli and they have some mitotic activity. 
and the septa is infiltrated by lymphocytes. So, this is the thing. So, typically, why it is a clear in cytoplasm due to the presence of glycogen or PAS, that is the paradic assistance reagent positive, that is why it is a clear in color. And grossly, it is in a yellowish in color due to this presence of glycogen. So, these are the cell. How this? So, this is the tumor cells and this is the septa. The septa is infiltrated by the small T lymphocyte. Yeah. And according to the component of the various component, they may present it with the beta HCG positive, maybe a placental alkaline phosphatase positive yeah, or alpha beta protein positive according to the component attached with this tumor. See, this is the tumor cells. These are the tumor cells in lobular configuration separated by the fibrous stoma and the lymphocyte in between the stomal fibers. See this. This is the lobule, sheets of lobule separated by the fibrous stoma and the infiltrated by the small lymphocytes. This is the cell. This is the prominent nucleoli. This is the nucleus. Uh, round to oval or polygonal and this is the clear cytoplasm. Uh, this is the and the stoma is infiltrated by the small lymphocyte. So, this short note, if it is come, you write what is it seen, how it is occurs, how that the gross appearance, how it is microscopical appearance. Again, this tumor cells, this is the stoma and what is the Prognosis, it is a highly radio sensitive and it is the good prognosis and the positive for OCT 3 by 4, CKID and the plaque, all those things are positive. Prognosis is very good because of the highly radio sensitive. How the patient presented with? Patient presented with maybe small size, maybe an advanced size. If it is according to the stage of the disease, the Patient presented with the portal swelling, it may be hazy, may be a painful, may be a painless, eh? or it may be in the advanced stage, may be in the metastatic site. So, according to this stage of the patient, they presented accordingly. Other than this, other tumors are in short, you know the name. Eh? That is the embryonal carcinoma, that is also a germ cell tumor. Or Yoxar tumor, you know something about Yoxar tumor or endodermal cytos tumor that also occurs in the ovary and also occurs in the testes positive for alpha fetoprotein. Only remember for oral that is the alpha fetoprotein Yoxar tumor and the characteristic is the Shiga tumor body. Only you know the name, everything is not very difficult to remember for you that is the Shiga tumor body is characteristics of the Yoxar tumor or endodermal sinus tumor is a positive for alpha beta protein. This is the positive resistant tumor is this, this is a shila tumor body and positive for alpha beta protein. Choriocarcinoma. Know something about choriocarcinoma that occurs in the basis. Choriocarcinoma. 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 Tissue the thake. Choriocarcinoma. Choriocarcinoma. Tissue the thake. Kota thake. Choriocarcinoma. Choriocarcinoma. Tissue the thake. ফলেটা <laughs> Beta is positive. positive? It is more than 50,000 international annually. For oral purpose, something you have to know. If oral level asks, that is the choriocarcinoma arising from the chorionic tissue, fully potential stem cells take a differentiate correct yet, you must say, and positive for this chorionic villi. Eh? It is a very important because of highly fast blood and patient is aggressive patient, patient has very much uh, die because of the vascular metastasis. 
That's why it is the metastasis is highly vascular and hematogenous metastasis. That's why it is very aggressive tumor. This is the composition that is the sensitotopoblast, cytotopoblast. This uh, we know the sensitotopoblast is a multinucleate cell. You know, so tumor is composed of like this. Tell a microscope at Palai de Kamra Janbo. This is a podiocarcinoma. If we do it for tumor marker, that is beta HCG positive. So, the, for oral purpose, you know the small cell thing only. Another most important thing, it is a teratoma. Tera means three. <coughs> that tumor that arising from a, both testes and ovary. Same thing happens, both sides. Tera means three. So, tumor composed of the components, composed of the three germinal center. That is germinal layer. What is teratoma? The tumor that arises from the three germinal layer, huh? composed of these three. That is the teratoma. It may be mature, it may be immature. What are the three germinal tissue that compose? Huh? That is the teratoma is the three ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. The three elements they relax for the oral. Ectoderm means all ectodermal elements, the tumor composed of composing all those things, it is not coming in one, one, one. What is a mixture of that thing? We have to identify under microscope. That is ectodermal element means, what are the ectodermal elements? The hair particles, skin adenic cell tissue, teeth, that hair, tuft of hair, tooth, huh? everything that is mixed with that. Mesoderm is that blood vessels, then maybe the muscle, that may be a fat, not tissue, not, 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 not this an ectoderma. So all those components and endoderma, all the silomic cavity, they are composed. So three elements, three germinal center, the tumor is a mixture of that thing. That is teratoma. If it is a mature, that is a mature teratoma. If not mature, it is immature, then it is called immature teratoma. Prognosis is immature is very, very poor because it not that all the elements are differentiated. So, according to these elements and this aggressiveness, the immature teratoma is prognosis is very poor than the mature one. So, I will show you the ovarian dermatosis, ovarian mature cystic teratoma in ovary. Patient has oral cyst in hello. That is, benign cystic teratoma is a very good prognosis. But test is, you remember that unless proved otherwise, is teratoma in the test is, is immature. Very rare, that is the mature teratoma in test is, is very rare. Unless proved otherwise, the testicular teratoma is immature and its prognosis is very, very poor. I got a The ectoderm, skin, adenexa, eye, neural tissue, mesoderm, connected tissue, bone, cartilage, fat, smooth and spinal muscle, endoderm, gastrointestinal, respiratory tract, endocrine gland, all those silomic cavity entities are there. So, oral purpose, you have to know the three entities and the elements of the three germline. So, for oral purpose, you remember all those things. This is the, this is the, Cartilage. This is the cartilage. This is fat. This is the skin at an extra. This is the keratinous material. This is the silomic cavity. This is the columnar cell silomic cavity. This is the adenexal tissue, fat, muscle tissue, mineral tissue. This is mineral tissue. So all those things is come in haphazard way. You have to identify accordingly. This is the immature one. Not all the tissue are mature huh? or differentiated. That's why it is immature and depends upon the kitchen report, depends on the immaturity, depends on the how much neural tissue is present. Mone ragbe, the jato beshi neural tissue thagbe, tato beshi this fever in immature prognosis is very, very poor. Clear? Tale, egulo hachi phan nijade jano mone ragbe, and practical porikha jano mone ragbe, oral age jano. Archie Janandor Kadache, J. Timot Ajbe, 
তার এই যে সব টিউমার মার্কার কেন দরকার ফর ট্রিটমেন্ট পারপাস বিটা এসি দরকার আলফা ভিটো প্রোটিনের জন্য দরকার প্রেপ দরকার আর কি দরকার না তোমার যার যার যদি তোমার মিক্সচার অফ দা টিউমার থাকে দ্যাট ইজ দা মিক্স জাংশন টিউমার দা কম্পোনেন্ট অ্যাকর্ডিংলি দ্যাট প্রগনোসিস ডিফেন্ড আর দা ম্যাচিওর টেরোটমা বেটার দ্যান দা ইমেচিওর আফটার স্মার্ট ওয়াটার সাইটিক সেমিনোমা ডিটেইলস তোমাদের জন্য নয় এলডারলি پیشنটের সাধারণত एमसीक्यू that mtd you know what is that example embryonal that example as a embryonal carcinoma and teratoma mixture or seminoma eoxyac tumor mixture or eoxyac tumor embryonal carcinoma mixture so in mixture of the more than two three components we have to identify if under microscope if not identified we will give the advice test for this alpha fetoprotein beta hcg or other tumor marker for identification of the marker for helping in the clinician for their treatment of the patient so mixed junction tumor is very important if not identify under microscope we have to advise for the patient for the clinician do for this for better prognosis as yolk sac tumor has better prognosis if not identify under microscope if tumor markers give the positive result this prognosis is better so on ntt that is a mixed germ cell tumor we have to know one is that clinician they differentiate into seminoma and non seminoma why they differentiate this thing for their treatment why that is the radio sensitivity is a seminoma other this is a radio resistant and if the prognosis is good prognosis is bad so that's why the clinician they differentiate a blood classification by two for their treatment purpose now how the testicular tumor spread they will ask if that specimen has come for exam how the space tumor is spread it is a both hematogenous spread and lymphatic spread lymph node how they go the lymph node that is the para testicular go sub lymph node from that go to the peritoneal red to peritoneal and medius minor or go to the cervical groups of lymph node sometimes they go through the hematogenous route lung liver vein bone metastasis so these are the tumor they spread both hematogenous and lymphatic as it is a vascular tumor or it is a according to their stage of the disease patient may present it with a lymphatic metastasis or it may be comes with the hematogenous metastasis also see the tumor markers and as a whole help for treatment see this these are the beta hcg alpha fetoprotein lactosaminidases ca even placental lactogen placental alkali phosphonates testosterone estrogen these are the some markers to help in the tumor treatment stage of the disease not going in details if it is just confined to the testis is better prognosis than it is going to the further that is the lymphatic roots of metastasis if it is below the diaphragm it's a, a poor um, uh, not so poor but if it is go to the beyond the uh, diaphragm it is a poor prognosis so according to the stage of the disease the prognosis depends if it is a confined to the testis it is a 99% five year survival rate then metastasis to the lymph node now one more theory question why is that testicular tumor seminoma is same as or a counterpart of this germinoma in ovary so this is the theory question for explain 
So we have to remember for odal also they will ask. So this germinoma, this is the tumor analogous share the many biological features. So why this germinoma is the female counterpart of the male seminoma? Why this? The seminoma in the male is counterpart of the female which is this germinoma. You know, morphologically they are same. Genetically, they have the both tumor genetical feature is the CK positive, uh, RS uh, mutation, amplification of chromosomal here and other also to the potential marker. Because both tumor share this genetic mutation. And common developmental origin, because testicular tumor is seminoma arising from the pluripotential stem, so it is the, from the pre-malignant germ cell neoplasia in C2, while the disturbinoma also they arise from the primordial germ cell. So germ cell related origin both eh? and morphological same, both uh, they are, share the genetic features are same. Another thing is the sensitivity, both are radio that is the chemotherapy <coughs> sensitive, <coughs> that's why exam question they will ask why the seminoma test is, is the female counterpart of this seminoma or the seminoma test is in the male counterpart of the this seminoma. So this is the this seminoma, same to like configuration microscopically they are look like same. That's why we have to write maybe in the five marks, maybe in the four marks, you don't know, they will ask or maybe in the oral question they will ask. So take a message what to have to know for short note. No need, we don't have so much of time. Huh? Only for short note, you discuss among yourself and read accordingly. Seminoma, how it morphology, gross and microscopy, counterpart of the tumor in ovary, you know, another is the Janssen tumor, extra gonadal Janssen tumor site. It is the oral question. Janssen tumor usually occurs in the gonad, that is testis and ovary. Then they will ask what is the extra gonadal site for Janssen tumor. Uh, it is always not written in the book. Other than that, it may be in the all retroperitoneum, all midline retroperitoneum, maybe in the mediastinum, maybe in the base of the brain, maybe in the coccyx, in the below part of that coccyx. So these are the some Janssen tumor that can occur. So extra gonadal Janssen neoplasm, if they oral ask, you have to answer. Not always written in the book, but for oral purpose, you have to remember. Make tumor markers, all the things that I told you have to know. You accept tumor, alpha pitobidin. Don't forget, beta ACG, it is for choriocarcinoma. So these are the things. And what are the tumor that come? That is secondary tumor come in the testes. These are the prosthetic carcinoma coming from there. Tumors from the lung, kidney, GIT, melanoma, that also secondary tumor. Primary tumor of the testes, you know. But the secondary tumor sometimes, sometimes they ask, nobody will ask, but you have to remember the surrounding tumors that can metastasis from the surrounding area to the testes. Now, this is the thing. Now, another small, that is the specimen, for short note, you have to remember these things. What is this? This is the penile structure you know. This is the cross section. This is the longitudinal section. So, we have to know the carcinoma of the penis. That is the short note purpose or oral purpose or it may be in the specimen. Don't know what will come in your exam. What is this thing? That, uh, that Penis has different types of disease. It may be a inflammatory disease or it may be a non-inflammatory disease or it may be a neoplasty disease. Mostly it is that no inflammatory disease, maybe all the skin related diseases may be there or very much important, not nowadays previously, it is a STD. STD previously it was very notorious disease that can occur in the Penal skin. Eh? And nowadays, so much of invent of that uh, treatment, usually the STD is not so common, but it is there, mostly there. And another thing is the 
malignant disease. So, neoplasm that is that different types of skin lesion. I am not going in details. Another neoplastic condyloma, pre malignant lesion that is the penile carcinoma in situ and carcinoma of the penis. What are those things? So, these are the things you have to know. In the precocious squamous lesion, that is the penile intra uh, in situ neoplasia, that is the carcinoma in situ. What are those things? Penile intra, uh, in, intraepithelial neoplasia, when it is the full thickness of the squamous epithelium is undergo dysplastic. It may be associated with the HPV, we know. And the function of HPV related, that is the mechanism of pathogenesis, that also you know from the general pathology. So, when it is related to HPV, that is called the Bowen's disease, that is the full thickness dysplasia of the skin, that is the Bowen's disease. If not associated with the HPV, that is the palinitis erotica obliterans. So, these two things, one is related to HPV related, one is not related to HPV. Another one, the infiltrating squamous cell carcinoma. So, this thing is important. Pathogenesis of HPV, I am not going details, everybody we know from your general pathology, huh? that is the related to high risk HPV, that is the 16 and 18, E6 and E7, you know how they act. Huh? So, it related to the inactivation of P53, RB gene and give rise to the genetic instability and this the uh, increased proliferation, cell cycle proliferation, inhibition of the apoptosis and the cell is increased and give rise to a squamous cell carcinoma. So, the pathogenesis of HPV related disease the squamous cell carcinoma, this thing for short note purpose you have to know. And here also when this comes in the short note, if they ask for this pathogenesis, you have to write this thing. If not us, otherwise anyhow it can be applied. So, the pathogenesis of HPV related disease which was the virulent part that is the 16-18 is that virulent, they will ask in the oral exam. Now, squamous cell carcinoma of the penis, we have to know for exam. It is uh, malignancy is not so common rare but it is available but it is very rare in the Jews and that Mohammedans people because of their circumcision in their early age group. And that smegma that is thought to be carcinogenic that are not secreted or accumulated of that patient. So, they are rare in those group of people because of the ritual circumcision. So, this is not common on this group. Usually, it is occurring in the elderly patient and related uh, that HPV related tumors are associated with this. See this thing, no need to details for oral purpose you will ask, this is the dysplasia, full thickness dysplasia here, this full thickness here, this is the thing, full thickness dysplastic changes is there and here, this is the gross examination of this thing, maybe ulcerated that four skin is ulcerated, go to the as a cauliflower growth, going to the from the skin surface to sulcus and according to this stage, the patient is involved from the four skin to the deep inserted. So, grossly innermost lining, they are infiltrated by this tumor mass. Here, this is the full thickness, this is the full thickness, here this full thickness are go deep into this structure. Rest of neoplastic cells with keratin that is according to the stage of the disease, it may be a well differentiated small cell carcinoma, may be a moderately differentiated, may be a poorly differentiated. So, differentiation depends upon what is differentiation, how much it is related to the parent tissue. The tissue, how much is related or visible to the parent tissue is called differentiation. If it is mostly related, that is well differentiated. If moderately differentiated, is that is the moderately related. If not visible to that parent tissue, it is a poorly differentiated. So, according to the differentiation, maybe a well differentiated, moderately differentiated, and poorly differentiated. 
and metastasis to the according to the stage of the disease from the local area to the go to the surrounding lymph node and repeat the late stage go to the different types of area may be in the largely distensional lung liver metastasis. So the regional lymph node metastasis to the inguinal lymph node, high pelvic groups of lymph node and very late they are go to the liver lung and uh, other structures. So here is the local area. If it is deeper structures, they go to the distance and to the stage. If it is related to this thing without limb node, prognosis is good. If it is go to the beyond that uh, local side to the regional limb node to the distance size, the prognosis is poor. Now five year survival rate, if it is the primary one without any lingual limb node, it is the 85 to 100 percent. If it is a very poor metastasis, this external site the metastasis is very poor. So according to the stage of the disease, localized to the area, that is a good prognosis, then the distant metastasis. Here, 